So that's right, my name's Ollie. I'm at Millennial Media. I head up the publisher and developer um, services team across Europe. Um, I'm going to touch on a few things today, uh, primarily how mobile advertising can support your growth objectives. Uh, let's have a, look, a little look at rich media, how it can actually help you monetize you know, where the actual demand is coming from right now, and look at some basic integration considerations. I think the first thing I should reiterate here is that there isn't really a obvious answer for everybody that I can, I can really kind of tell you. So I'm going to try and feed as much information to you as possible and as simply as possible so you can all make up your own minds as to what's right for your strategy. So the first thing we should look at is why serve advertising? Um, can I see, is, is anyone actually running any advertising within their applications right now? Is everybody happy with it? No? Okay, that's a good start. Um, so, a couple of things. I mean, generally, the main reason that everyone would initially look at is incremental revenue. Um, it, it's the obvious choice. It's exactly what it's there for, is to drive revenue streams. But there's a couple of other areas that you can look at as well that aren't just about serving someone else's advert. So, by having the space available, you can actually load in your own campaigns across certain apps to cross-promote um, and try and push that as much as you can to, to retain the audience you have. Um, also, right now, driving in a, a revenue stream in a very young market, if you get to a level now where it's as, as high as that revenue can be, you're still going to see some significant growth through that over the next few years. So just to throw some numbers at you, uh, or actually first, let's have a look at the growth. Numbers are coming. Um, so a bit of background on the growth that we've seen so far. Um, starting back in 2006, the beautiful N95 was a handset I had. Uh, did anyone else have the same unit? Yeah. Would you go back to it? No. <laughs> um, so it was kind of the first model where ads started to run and people were starting to use a handset as a, a kind of media unit for music, gaming. I used to play FIFA soccer on there. Very difficult to play, but I, but I did. But it was very kind of limited to text ads. Technology wasn't really there to serve advertising, but it was a good kind of benchmark to see how it worked. 2007, as you'll know, the iPhone launched and we started getting connected devices like the iPod um, Touch, the PSP, uh, DS, where we could all serve serve advertising. It started to kind of revol re revolutionize how we looked at mobile. Um, we then pushed it to 2008 with everyone pushing apps like you guys. Um, and from that, we saw a lot more interest from advertisers coming in, looking to try and identify how they could do something a little bit creative, maybe on app launch, um, something rich media focused. Um, and that's now stemmed from 2009 onwards with the growth in Android, um, tablets, and so on. And that investment has really kicked off since, since 2009. So some numbers. Um, so last year alone, we saw 83 million pounds in the UK spent um, on mobile advertising, of which just under 30 million was display spend. The rest came from search. Uh, so it's 116% almost growth year on year. I can tell you now that through 2011, that growth has been even more significant. Um, and those numbers will hopefully be released by the IAB officially at the end of this year. Um, we're obviously seeing that people spend a lot more time on mobile. So people are now using their phones and apps in sync with watching TV, they're spending more time on the internet on mobile than they are actually online. Um, and obviously a lot of that's down to having the smartphone and the penetration we've seen on smartphone growth. So last year alone, 58% growth year on year, and we're looking at that growing quite significantly through the next few years, which you'll see here. So end of this year, 571 million smartphones we're expecting to see globally in the industry. Um, and within the next four years from there, I'm hoping that'll be at about 1.2 million. So what does it tell us? It basically tells us now that there's a unit from an advertiser perspective where people can actually now target you as an individual user with something that's a lot more personal than it would be um, in other formats. So if you look at this uh, picture here, it's not the most exciting, but you can see print in the bin. Um, you can see uh, TV and general outdoor advertising. It's great, but it's not really as personal. There's, very, there's a lot of limitations as to how personal it can get. And I'll touch on some, some targeting opportunities on, on where we're seeing demand coming from right now and how personal that can be. So, so how can it help support your growth? Like I said, there isn't a definitive answer, so I thought the best thing for me to do was highlight to you exactly what an advertiser is looking for right now um, based on targeting, based on the rich media assets they're looking to run, and you can identify how you would actually pull that into your application based on, on your own needs. Um, and I guess the general rule of thumb here is just to try and make sure that your app is the best fit towards advertising if that is your main objective. So who's buying? Um, it's, most of the spend right now is coming through agencies, as, as a lot of you may know. Um, but it's not just coming through traditional media agencies like we see in digital. We've actually got a lot of spend, and so far the majority of the spend coming through mobile agencies. 
which is where it all kind of started. A lot of kind of performance business that I'm sure you've all seen, um, like kind of CPC driven campaigns or text based campaigns, all driving through those guys. But if we look at the last 12 months, especially, the media agencies are really starting to take mobile on and put significant budget into rich media formats for product releases. Um, and I'll show you an example on Samsung on that later. Um, location based targeting and trying to drive footfall into store through something like Starbucks, and I'll show you that later and entertainment, which has been huge. So right now, the majority of demand on new formats like video, expandable media, it's all being driven, as far as we can see, by entertainment budget. They want to showcase video trailers on mobile and try and get the message across as much as they can. And what are they buying into? So the top three trends we've seen over the last six months, um, the, the main trend actually has been cross-platform delivery. So finding out people aren't just buying into iOS, um, they're actually now looking at Android, they're looking at RIM and they're looking to try and get as much reach as possible. So if you are developing across multiple platforms, definitely consider advertising on Android and don't just look at iPhone because the spend there is just as significant as it is and it's growing just as quickly as it is on iPhone. An example there, 78% of all the campaigns we booked were all cross-platform across the whole network and that's globally. Um, the other two areas are channel spending. So we're now getting a lot of um, campaigns coming through targeting just specifically news, just entertainment, maybe just sports. So they're really trying to look at a core audience rather than just a general mobile spend. Um, and they're also looking to try and do that whilst building in as much reach as possible. So maybe doing some cross-promoting of targeting a specific channel, but then looking at kind of social and just trying to get as much reach out there and seen by as many people as possible and running both on a, a slightly different model. So performance. Something I just wanted to highlight, and I'm going to touch on some examples on sort of bad ad placement um, a, a bit later. Um, Everything's kind of driven up until, I guess, middle to back end of last year on performance campaigns, very kind of CPC driven. I found a lot of developers when they're loading ads into their application are just putting ads in a place just so they can drive as many clicks as possible, because in theory, clicks drive revenue. Uh, this is really just to, to show that actually payout models now and what advertisers are looking for is more about the kind of post-click interaction. So it's not just about generating a click and paying you guys, it's looking at whether that actual unit has been downloaded or whether the landing page they've gone on to has actually been interacted with, then that revenue is being pushed out. So have a, think a lot more now about rather than just kind of trying to drive clicks, actually trying to drive true clicks so that you get true performance back out um, on, the, on the post uh, tracking. And three payment models I'm sure you're all familiar with. Very briefly, CPM is pretty much what all the rich media is paying out on right now. Uh, video is by far the highest payment model. Um, huge amount of demand coming in, especially over the last three months not enough traffic, not, not enough people are pushing video, and I definitely recommend it. I'll show you some examples shortly. And CPC and CPA, very much driving performance. Uh, and based on, form, on the uh, placements, so standard banners, I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, but now we're actually getting advertisers putting a lot more investment in showcasing more rich media, how they can get the message across in a bigger way rather than just running a simple banner. The tablet's been great for that. I mean, the Shrek example here, you can see it's a full overlay. Uh, with videos running in it, a puzzle. Um, you can link through to some form of kind of social push from it as well. Um, and then all the way back down to location-based targeting and expandable banners. So I'd say just, I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm running through this in very basic form, but if you take a look at all those areas and just have a look at what you guys have as applications that you're developing, and especially the ones you're going to be running advertising on, try and identify, first and foremost, what you have that you think is unique to an advertiser that will drive more revenue. So it could be anything from specific content you have or a brand that's strong enough to kind of push that to something just as simple as you have pre-roll video available, none of your competitors do. In that case, you're probably going to get the largest share of voice of that revenue that comes through. So driving revenues. Um, rich media, obviously, as I said, I'm going to put a bit of focus on is, is where a large chunk of growth is coming from right now, and it is where the highest CPMs are, and it is guaranteed revenue based on the CPM model. So I'd say if you want to capitalize on that as much as possible, definitely have an in-app SDK plugged in and try and plug in as much as you can based on the assets that are available. So video, expandable media, interstitials. The more you have, the, the, the higher revenues that you guys are going to generate. So quick look at some of the examples. Um, I picked these two out specifically because they're both expandable units, but, but very different in, in what they offer. So this is something that ran recently for Starbucks. Um, Standard expandable unit, they didn't want to take anybody away from the application and what they were doing, but they wanted to try and drive footfall into Starbucks stores um, during specific hours of the day, just in certain radiuses around certain London um, stations, 
and you'll see from the example that it actually plans your route within the actual expandable unit um, from where you are near the station directly to your nearest Starbucks store. So I'll just show you a quick video on this. And excuse the music not being quite as cool as the, uh, the last presentation. Um, so next example, again, very, um, very similar unit, expandable. It was something that ran for Samsung, but it was really about just trying to push the Galaxy tab, try and get as much information about the product out to users as possible, but again, without trying to take them away from the actual application. So everything was built into the expandable unit, probably one of the heaviest units I think that's been built so far. It was nearly 30 pages built into that one unit, showcasing everything from a 3D um, movable icon of the actual product um, all the way through to all the functions that it does. So I'll quickly show you this as well. So with regard to Rich Media, pretty much that's where everything has been spending so far. So anyone that's running ads right now and is running any form of expandable units, that's probably where most of your CPM business has come from. Um, but right now, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the last quarter, um, video is what we're getting the majority of requests for now. So most of the movie campaigns that have been running that have all kind of utilized that expandable unit are all requesting testing video in either a kind of uh, pre-app um, load um, or as an interstitial. So this is a very brief example, and I won't dwell on this too much. Um, but it's a, it's a kind of precast video that will run through the SDK. You'll have it setting wherever you want it to sit. So between content, between game levels, to load in, it'll run a 15-second video ad with an opt-out after seven seconds. But because it's precached on the first visit, it runs seamlessly with no buffering time. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it looks great. So I'll show you some examples um, of that if anyone wants to come have a look outside. So Rich Media is great, um, but we probably shouldn't, as much as these aren't as attractive, we shouldn't forget this because right now this is probably still catering for about 70% of the overall revenue that's being spent in the market right now. Um, so I'm going to touch on the best places to kind of showcase these ads um, within the app. And again, try not to focus too much on just trying to generate clicks, but get good placement and track true clicks. So integration, uh, we know the market's ready now. We know the spend is there. Um, I think a few things you guys need to ask yourselves is are you actually ready as a developer to serve advertising? So have you actually identified um, where you place the ads? Have you thought about the right ad serving capabilities? Do you have those in place? Are you looking for kind of mediation layers or just one partner just to serve out? And again, I'll touch on that in a second. Um, do you have enough infantry to monetize? That's always a good start. Um, if you've only got 2,000 impressions a month, you're probably not going to be blown away by the numbers you see at the end of the month. Um, and I guess, you know, look at how you can manage user experience. And I think ad placement is, is key on that and also running the, re the re right relevant campaigns. So a quick look at effective banner placement. I've just used two examples here. Um, so one that's very text heavy uh, within app and one that isn't. Um, you see on the one on the left, ad placement's at the top of the page. And I sh you should excuse the screenshots here. That is an Android screenshot on an iPhone. I apologize. Um, so you see the hangover creative on the top, on the top left. The app placement is right at the top of the page and it's not anywhere near any part of the app where you're going to interact. 
for me, you know, I'm probably being very, very basic here, but it's the best place to put it. Don't put it anywhere near the content at the bottom because it'll create accidental clicks. It'll annoy users um, that are just actually just trying to interact with the app itself. Um, but if they do want to action it, then they can go through and view all the content within the expandable unit. And this goes the same for the, the text-based version here. So we've got the ad at the top that actually sits as a static image and all the content scrolls behind that up and down within this Twitter feed. And again, it's far enough away from all the, um, the activation points within the app. An example of how not to do it. This is uh, something that actually ran in our network very briefly. Um, I say very briefly. This is someone that I gave an example of trying to drive clicks. So there's two ads here. One's overlapping the other. So you can't even see the full size of one of the ads. And they've placed it right behind all the navigation bars within the application. And this is a pretty extreme example. But basically, the click-through rates on this were coming through at like 40-something percent, um, pretty much all of them accidental. So the advertiser, uh, sorry, the, um, the app developer is probably looking at it and thinking his revenues are great for like the first few days um, and probably getting a bit overexcited. But as soon as we see that, we go into the system and we just stop pretty much anything of any importance running within that app because it's killing performance on our end for the advertiser and it just doesn't look great. And we'd rather focus it on somewhere where we're actually going to get true performance. So just concentrate on ad placement and just make sure that it's in the right place and that anything that's going to be interacted with is, is true. Ad serving. So obviously we want to get these up and running. Um, for me, the simplest option is just to plug in an SDK. Um, pretty much every ad network and, and ad sales house out there has SDKs to plug in. Um, the majority of them will run rich media and so on. I'd say if you're going out there, have a look at a three-in-one SDK. A few reasons why. A three-in-one SDK is one bit of kit that you only need to update once or every time the update comes out, it's one bit of kit that you'll need to update every time, every time you update the app. Um, so to limit your, your ongoing development work, but it'll also run every type of ad format within one SDK. So video, interstitials, the full works. The other option, if you're not looking just to work with one partner, um, is looking at mediation layers. So media, mediation layers can be great because again, they're only one, it's one piece of SDK that you can plug in. They do all the hard work in the background to plug in multiple SDKs from other networks and sales houses so that you can actually optimize and utilize all of those relationships to make sure that every single impression is filled, but at the highest possible eCPM that you can generate. And make sure you're passing on as much data as possible. Traditionally, uh, if we look at digital, uh, people were really targeting just by time of week, uh, like day, by country, and by channel. In mobile, it's very different. We're getting requests through now. Uh, for example, we had a campaign that launched a couple of weeks ago. It was basically looking to, similar to, to Starbucks, looking for time of day, um, so running between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the evening on iPhone only um, across O2 and um, Orange, and they wanted to target specific channels. It was uh, across um, social news and entertainment. So start thinking about the data you can pass on. The more data you pass, the better we can utilize it, the more money we can actually generate for you. So just a couple of things to take away. Um, Identify what's going to make your app different and more attractive to an advertiser. Uh, ensure that every single rich media asset that you can possibly run is available to run and it will increase your revenue. Um, obviously understand your advertiser needs. That's pretty much covered in the first two points. Um, keep a view on up and coming demand. So video I'm going to again use as an example. We've got too much demand coming through right now. We haven't got enough supply. And basically just people just aren't updating their SDKs quick enough. They're not understanding the kind of benefits of the CPMs on them. So keep in touch on what's happening with latest um, video assets that are coming through. And just make sure that you get the best, best ad placement to get the best return on your advertising. And most importantly, keep it simple and straightforward. And that's it. So we'll have time for a few questions. And I'd like to do the hands up again. Who, who does have an app with advertising built in? <clears throat> Three. Who's successful in making money out of it? Hey, what? are you speaking later? <laughs> um, so what would be your advice for people who A, do not use right now advertising and people who are not successful with it? How, how, how can they become successful? Okay, so I'd say um, for people that aren't running it right now, um, I'd start testing in a small capacity. I wouldn't just kind of go fully fledged and try and load everything in at once to try and maximize your revenue. Just really try and identify the look of your app, get the standard banner on there first and start identifying how users are going to engage with it and then start experimenting with new formats once they've got used to seeing advertising on the app. 
I think the key thing and, and probably that all of you worry about is kind of managing user experience. So I'd, I'd start small, heavy frequency capping, run some house creative in there for cross promotion so it's not all about just serving advertising and then just gradually build it in. I think too many people are, uh, all the time just try and flood everything and say, yeah, I can do video, I can do this, I can do that. And then day one, they switch it on and they just see you know, a bit of a dip in their audience because people are just getting fed up with seeing too much. So my advice would be keep it simple and start slow. And then once you understand what works, then capitalize on that and build it in as quickly as possible. All right. Any questions? Well. Okay. Hey, so I'll, I'll go next then. Okay. Because uh, I'm always full of questions on this subject. Um, so median revenue per developer that is using your SDK today, is it something that you can share? Uh, so just say that again. The median revenue that, that someone can expect. So kind of average revenue. Yeah. Uh, no, median. Uh, if you could give me median and average, I'd be interested. But I'm all, I'm <laughs> <laughs> median is really what I'm interested in. Um, I'd say it's, it's a tough question. I mean, it, it's, everyone wants to know exactly how much revenue they can generate. It all depends on the app you've got. It depends on the units you're running. If you're just running standard banner ads and you're completely reliant upon performance, your eCPMs are going to be extremely low and probably not that competitive and not that exciting. Unless you start loading in things like rich media um, and capitalizing on the CPM revenues that are coming out, you, know, you could be looking at, as, from a network perspective, upwards of sort of two, three dollars eCPM, no problem, with a lot of traffic. But unless you start looking at the CPM units and understanding what's spending, it's, it's going to be quite low. So it all depends on what you're plugging in. Plug in rich media, you'll make a lot of money. Don't plug in rich media, you're not going to make a huge amount of money. And what kind of app do fit better, the rich media element? Um, it's a good question. So we're finding now that gaming is working very well. Um, obviously, with different levels linking in, we can run video interstitials. Um, and it just fits in quite nicely and obviously people are already engaged in the app and they want to play the next level so they don't mind seeing something so that always helps um, also uh, apps with good brands so good news brands are being very successful with with that right now entertainment brands for the entertainment rich media running your kind of IMDBs and so on are, are working mm -hmm. extremely well okay so kind of targeted in a segment and then yeah. you need to think about your ad and your app as being two things that go in parallel. Yeah, exactly. So if you've got an app that's focused on entertainment, then you know you need to be speaking to the right partners about supplying entertainment creative so it's relevant, maintains user experience and ensures high revenues. Is that something that you do, find the right partners or is it something you expect the developer to do? Uh, no, well, yeah, so I do that on my end. So basically I look at the demand that's coming to the network and I go out and match that against the supply that's out there. So we're going out and educating developers as to you know, what's out right now, what they should be utilizing, um, and then we buy specific media in line with that. So what's your advice straight away? Like today, if I, if I was, you have quite a few developers in the audience, what kind of app should they write right now to, to get the best out of, uh, of the advertising yeah, you have in stock? Uh, blimey, I mean for me, entertainment, gaming is, is absolutely killing it at the moment. Performance is, is far exceeding everything else. Click-through rates are great, um, but they're true click-through rates, and we can experiment with rich media because that's where what most people are targeting. So I, for me, gaming and entertainment, anything that's around kind of movie releases um, or games. All right. But that's me. So. Last chance for a question. Okay, well, in that case, thanks a lot.